Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah, it's me. You, yeah, it's me. It's me. It's me. Even laying demands on your time. It's me laying demands on your time. It's me laying demands on your time. It's me because there are many things I want to say in this season. I want to say many things. I have many things to say. I have many things to say. Yeah, there are a lot of things in the heavens that want to come down. There are many things in heavens that want to come down. Yeah, it is me. It is me. I want to speak. I have many things bottled in my heart I want to say. I want to say many things because in the season that you are in, it's a season where many things has to be spoken to you. Many things has to be spoken to you. You have to endure this season. You have to endure this season. You have to endure this season. There are many things still yet to be spoken. There are many things still yet to be said. There are many things still yet to be spoken. You have to give me time. You have to give me time. You have to give me time. I want to speak. I have many things to say. I have many things to say. You have to endure this season. Endure this word. Endure this time. Endure this time. Give me time. I have a lot to say to you. See the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hejuni milina halice vile ni melish te balia kle mondo vresti lia kle ashime ne lia kle kle ishte bani aste velo me ni a kle a kle a kle ishte balie ste veno mendo si lia endo si proste palamini lia gada bosh te bone mandesia. I want to make it clear. I want to make it clear. So I need time to make it clear. I need time to shine light for the parts to be made known. I need to make it known it's not yet clear. Many has not yet seen it. Many has not yet understood it. So I need time to make it clear. I need time to make it clear. I need to shine light on that ancient part again. I need to shine light on that part that has been covered many years ago. I need to make it clear. You have given your time to another. Hey, give me your time to make it clear. I need to make it clear. I need to shine light on the path. I need to shine light on the path. I need to make the path of life clear unto you so that everyone will see it. Everyone need to see it. All eyes need to see it. All eyes need to see it. It takes a lot of labor. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time for all eyes to see it. Even for your own eyes to see and comprehend. You need to sacrifice your time. You need to sit down at my feet. I want to make it bare for you to walk in it. I want to make it bare for you to desire it. I want to make it bare for you to hope for it. I want to make it bare for you to like it. You need time to make it so. See the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, um, we go. We believe God for help um, this season for everyone to pay the price um, that is needed to be paid for you to have entrance. Um, trust God that everybody will be able to pay that price. Let's see songs of Solomon. I want to continue from Tuesday burden. Um, we'll be taking those burden as the spirit leads. Um, so, uh, songs of Solomon. Um, we began to teach um, from um, the burden of the Song of Solomon. Um, I think it was one of uh, I think it was Reverend Sweet that said that he believed that um, those that canonize Scripture must have had some level of help why they were canonizing Scripture because um, some books were not canonized with Scriptures. Okay, we have heard some of those books, Judith, Edith, and all, some of them. But for them to canonize the songs of Solomon, it means that they knew that this book had um, thoughts from God relevant to the old uh, scriptures. Okay, and thank God that they did. Can we say amen? Because I don't know any scripture in the Bible that has this flow of uniqueness. Um, God put so Songs of Solomon there for a purpose. Um, Songs of Solomon is the epistle of John and the revelation of the New Testament. Okay, Songs of Solomon is the epistle um, of John and the book of revelation of the New Testament. So that you see that we have been crisscrossing um, Songs of Solomon and the book of revelation. And of course, we're also dovetailing to the epistles of John. So the songs of Solomon are the songs of love. What did I call the songs of Solomon? Okay, actually, if you read some translations, um, the, uh, one of the best translations um, for songs of Solomon is NKJV and some other translations. I, I'm going to to mention them it's because they divide the, the conversations. Because there are a lot of characters in songs of Solomon. I'll talk around some of them as God grants me grace. Um, they are like major characters in that book. And you need to know. So while you are reading, that's why at times many have not been able to uh, gain access. Like I said, it will take you to have a spiritual mind to be able to understand the, the conversations of love uh, penned down by Solomon in this particular document. However, um, you need also need to understand the characters, the major players in the Songs of Solomon. At least there are four. I think let me just name them. Number one is Solomon himself, which represents the king, okay, or the bridegroom. In some certain translations, he may be referred to as the beloved, depending, okay? Okay, so that's the first character, the king or the bridegroom. The second character, I want you to write it down. I want you to write them down so that you can, you can follow as we are teaching. The second character is the Shulamite. The Shulamite. And all these characters represent a major, um, they, are prophetic, they are prophetic meaning. Okay, this is a prophetic document. So they are prophetic portraits, what they represent. Okay, so the Shulamite, um, the next character is the Shulamite or the bride. The Shulamite is actually the bride. Okay? Then the third character are the daughters of Jerusalem, which are virgins. The third character that you come across um, in the Songs of Solomon are the daughters of Jerusalem, which are virgins. Then the fourth character is are the watchmen. The watchmen. I will tell you, maybe I'll just in a maybe I'll just do a brief of what they all represent as I go on. But I just want you to note these characters, okay? Um, you'll find the watchmen in Songs of Solomon chapter three and chapter five. Okay? The watchmen. Of course, the two major characters is the king, which is the bridegroom, and the Shulamite. Okay? Then the third major character, the daughters of Jerusalem, which are virgins. Then we have the watchman. That's the fourth character. Then the fifth character, there are about six thereabouts. The fifth character is the king's, the bridegroom, friends of the bridegroom. 
I call them the king's friend or the, the friends of the bridegroom. They are in Songs of Solomon chapter 6 verse 13. In particular, that's where they really show up. Okay? And um, we'll show your connection as we go on. Then the last one, which is the sixth character, I guess. Amen? Is the, uh, is the Shulamite brothers. The Shulamite brothers. They are in Songs of Solomon chapter 8 verse 8 to 9. Shulamite brothers. Okay. So let me just tell you what each represents. Then I'll start teaching. Are we okay? So the king is the bridegroom. We understand. Okay. The bridegroom is the one that wants to marry a bride. Okay. And in context, in prophetic scripture here, our Lord Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. That wants a bride for himself that they will be joined to in eternal union and pleasure all through the ages. So we see that play out in Revel from Revelation 19 down to Revelation 21. Um, in Revelation 21, the bridegroom had been joined to the bride in the bridal city. And the God of the bride and bridegroom is also joined with them. So it's, it's like a threefold cord. Can we say amen? amen? So what we are saying now that the bride is the bridegroom is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, um, there's the Shulamite represents the bride. Okay, um, the perfected bride or the bride, the bride that will be the queen, and the queen um, is the one that will be privileged to sit on the throne and reign with the bridegroom. Now, let me say at this point, it's not every believer that will be the bride. I've told you that there's a difference between the body and the bride. What did I say? Nobody's answering me. We have the body of Christ. We have the bride of Christ. They are not the same thing. Jesus is going to, is, is going to get a bride from the body. And there's even an, there are even interfaces or there are also seasons in that journey that um, after, even before you become a bride, you must be a virgin. Okay? So even the virgin is not even the body of Christ. The virgin church will be taken out of the body of Christ. Like we see in Revelation chapter 12. The woman in Revelation 12 is the virgin church. Let's quickly have a look at that woman. Amen. Revelation chapter 12. Amen. And there appeared the wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon on the earth. The sun here represents the light of the Father. Okay? Um, and the moon here represents a lesser light. It's the light of Christ. Actually, what this woman is experiencing is a product of the baby inside her. She herself has not come into full age. In terms of climaxing love commandment. Let me repeat that again. This woman has not come into full age. In terms of climaxing love commandments. Okay. But she has a child in her womb. That was already climaxing commandments. Can we say amen? amen. So the woman is the virgin. The child is the bride. The man child is the bride. So let's just read. So, and, and upon our end was a crown um, of, 12, of 12 stars. So all those things you see um, upon that woman is a function of the child she's carrying. Okay? It's the child that has those things. The child has been fully clothed. Okay? Um, that's a crown of righteousness. That child uh, has already completed everlasting what? Works. So that crown of 12 stars is a crown of an incorruptible man. Can we say that? It's a crown of what? An incorruptible man. That's an incorruptible crown. We see something like that in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. When Paul was talking about an incorruptible crown. Okay? So the man-child, which represents the bride has already come into incorruption. And then she had all the light. She had the light of the Father. She had the light of Christ. She was about, she's been about brought into the reign of God. 
which we'll see in a moment. Are we all here? Yes. Should I say that again? The man child church represents the bride. Okay? The woman represents the virgin. The bride will be brought out of the virgin. The virgin church is not the body of Christ. The virgin church will also be brought out of what? Of the body of Christ. Okay? So we see separations based on journey. What did I say? There is a journey. Now, I'm not doing this with a wrong mindset. I want you to get me because it's possible while people streaming and say, why are they dividing? No, they, that's not the purpose. The purpose is not for, um, it's not a feeling of being higher than anybody. It is the Lord that does the demarcation himself based on how you respond to him. So it's not a demarcation done by man. As it is now, I cannot even do that. God is the one that has the, God is the examiner. Amen. So it's not too wise for someone to begin to demarcate and say, I'm this, I'm that. You can be in a church that is a virgin church in terms of emphasis, and you are not a virgin in your own personal work with God. Okay? You, you, so are, are you getting what I'm talking about? So, but I'm saying that this is the Lord Jesus Himself doing the work of separation. Okay? Like we see in Malachi, they say, He shall sit as a refiner's fire. Okay, so Jesus is the one separating, um, you know, doing the work of separation in his church. And he will do it until he has a perfect church. Can we say amen? amen. What did I say he will do? He will do the work of separation until he has what? A perfect church. Can we say amen? amen? So we can see, I'm just showing you the differences. Now let's just read down quickly. We'll read down to verse 5. Um, and she being with a child cried, traveling in birth. And pain to be delivered. This is an exciting thing. So it shows me that the bride is going to come out of the virgin church. So it is amen. Hallelujah. Yes. They are going to bring out the bride. Out of a, a virgin church. Okay. So even the. So it means that. Because you see. You could see that. The woman was in travail. Okay. And pain to be delivered. So you could see. Um, in the book of Revelation that all those churches were in their last season of journey. Okay? And you could see that you will see a word consistent in the book of Revelation the first two chapters, first three chapters particularly chapter 2 and 3 um, um, the words written to the seven churches. He that overcomes. To him that overcomes. So they are talking to churches and they are calling overcomers out. To him that overcomes. So it's, it, so it's not it's not like it's not for everybody. To him that overcomes it. So to him there are those that are concluding the works for overcoming. If you don't obey the commandments to overcome, you will not overcome. Okay? Is that clear? Amen. Now look at verse 3. So there appeared another wonder in heaven. Uh, we know that behold the great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns seven crowns upon his head uh, this is not where i'm going but next verse and she was to she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was cut up to what god and his throne so it's clear so this is the bride the bride is the church that is as identified with the throne the bride is the church that has identified with the throne with God and his throne. So when you see throne here. You are seeing the reign of God. The actual reign of God. So. The bride that is identifying with the throne. Is the queen. So that's why I said that the Shulamite is the bride. Okay. Now. By the time you begin to go deep. You begin to understand. The Shulamite had already gone is already at the last stage of love. Amen. Let me repeat that again. I want us to reduce movement. The Shulamite is at the last phase of love. Now, in the season of everlasting love, there are two phases. What did I say? Yes. There's a phase of living and there's a phase of what? Abiding. Or we have first love and last love. Or first walk and last walk. We have been taught that over and over again. But I can tell you, 
that the Shulamite was already at the last walk of love in the most holy. Okay? So she will be qualified to be the queen. So, but the queen is the one that is identified with the throne and will reign with the bridegroom. Can we say amen? amen. Are, are we together? Yes, amen. amen. So, I've explained the Shulamites. I'm still going to break them down. I just want to give you an overall um, schematics. I'm giving you framework to understand the scriptures. This particular book. Then the third one are daughters of Jerusalem. Okay, now take me to uh, Psalm 45 verse 9. Daughters of Jerusalem are virgins that have been adopted into the Most Holy. Daughters of Jerusalem are virgins that have been brought into the Most Holy or the last season of, of perfection. Amen. Now, I remember when I first taught this series... I, I divided the, them into three. Okay? Remember, I divided them into three. So in Psalm 45 verse 9, we have three levels of churches here. Okay? What did I say we have? Okay? The first are honorable women. So honorable women, I want you to write it down. Honorable women are virgin churches or Christ churches or Zion. Okay? Honorable women. To be a vessel of honor, it means that you have been what? You have been named with the name of Christ. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Okay? It says, Let he that name it the name of Christ. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So, honorable women are named the name of Christ. Meaning they have been sealed with Christ. So they are vessels of honor. The reason why they are vessels of honor is that they have been sanctified. With the sanctification of Christ. Okay, I'm sure this is very clear. What did I say they have been sanctified with? The sanctification of Christ. So they are vessels unto honor. Now look at verse 20. You could see it there. But in the great house, they are not only vessels of gold, and of silver, but of also of wood and of earth. Look at that. Of wood and of earth. And some to what? Honor. And some to dishonor. So look at the criteria to become a vessel of honor. If anyone, verse 21, if anyone purge himself from this, he shall be what? A vessel of unto honor. I like what unto honor. So honor is an attainment. So you are sanctified to become honorable. What did I say? I'm not hearing you. Amen. So it shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified. That's what they used to describe an honorable vessel. An honorable vessel is a sanctified vessel. Okay. And means for the master's use. Prepared for every good work. So all the, every good work they are talking about there. There are works in the most holy. There are good works of God. What did I say? Amen. You know, there's a there, there's the Christ is good. We know that. Hallelujah. However, there is the good of the Father. <laughs> it is the Father that has good and perfect light. It is the Father that has Urim and Tumim. Um, you know, you could look at that. The priest in the holy place were different from the high priest. It was a high priest that carried the two stones of judgment upon his breastplate. The first one was Urim. Urim is from the word called awe. And it means good light. Okay? So that's the first light of God. Okay? The first light of God or the first light of the Father. It's called good light. And then the last one is called what? Perfect or shining light. Okay? You, Tumim. Tumim. That word to me means perfect. Okay? So those are, those are lights of the Father. So at times when the Bible says prefer to every good work. Okay? I believe that it's beyond the realm of honor. 
they are good works of God. What did I say? Every good work. So it is only an honorable vessel that can be used in the most holy. You can't do most holy service if you have not attained honor. What did I say? Most holy service is a higher service. Uh, you can you can do service there. So you can see all believe me, you may not believe this. All the twelve seven churches in the book of Revelation were all honorable churches. Even church in La of Laodicea was a church. All of them had been they have been raised by light of Christ. All of them. You know, we have traced that the, the, the epistle of Colossians was read in Laodicea. So that same epistle was shared with the Laodicean church. So the light of Christ that Paul shared with the church in Colossae was also shared in the Laodicean church. So all those churches were honorable churches. They were in the season of making them, uh, making them bridal, completely bridal to sit on the throne. Uh, many of them, you know, fall short of that. So take me back to that Psalm 45. Uh, I'm taking time to just give you a schematics. Then we'll go back to a, a Song of Solomon chapter 1. Uh -huh. So King's daughters were, were among thy honorable women. So I like the word among. They were among. So out of the company of honorable women, you have who? King's daughters. So these king daughters are those that are they are the next level. They are also called the beloved. They are in everlasting service or everlasting works. Okay? They are virgins that now need the ointment from the they need the grace that is upon the lips of the bridegroom. They need the bridegroom to speak grace to them. Eh? They are the ones that are being pulled by the name of the bridegroom, which is as anointment poured forth. So these are the king's daughters. They are the ones, okay? They are the ones that must now respond to the, the summon of the bridegroom to become bridal, to become the bride. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Amen. They are called beloved. That's what they call a king's daughter. Uh, Isaiah chapter 62 from verse 11 calls them daughter of Zion. Amen. I know we use that in very well. Daughter of Zion. Daughter of Zion is someone that has they have moved beyond Christ. They have been born by they have been born into the world of God. They are, they are babes of God. They have been born into the world of God. So they are daughters. And what is before them is salvation curriculum. So that's why it says, Behold, the Lord had proclaimed, that Lord is capital L O L D. So that's God. Okay? Uh, that's the everlasting God. What did I say that is? I'm not hearing you. Behold, the Lord had proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion. So, there has to be a doctrine that must be taught to the daughter of Zion. What did I say? Doctrine that will be taught to the daughter of Zion. Behold, thy salvation cometh. So, what daughter of Zion must learn is what? Salvation. For you to become a daughter of Zion, you must have Publish peace. So a daughter of Zion is already a publisher of what? Peace. But she must now be taught salvation. To now publish salvation. Take me to Isaiah 52 verse 7. We'll come back and round it up here. Can we say amen? amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. I hope I'm not too fast. Yes, so how beautiful upon the feet and uh, how beautiful upon the mountains rather 
at the feet of them that bringeth what? Good tidings. That bringeth good tidings. That's the first, first tidings that must be brought. That bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. So, the end of good tidings is the publishing of what? Peace. Good tidings there is Christ. It's the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ is good tidings. And what the doctrine of Christ will do to you is that it will make you a publisher of peace. Meaning that's, what, that's your conversation. When they say you are publishing, you publish a book, it means you are an author. It means, yes, you are an author. You have, you have a conversation already. So, the tiding that is good, or good tiding, will make you publish peace. So, a daughter of Zion is a publisher of peace already. That's what they call her daughter of Zion. Amen. Can we say amen? amen. Then you can see, uh, semicolon, that bringeth good tidings of good. Now, this is more than good tidings. This is now good tidings of good. Like gospel of Christ, eh? It's not the same thing as glorious gospel of Christ. Amen. Gospel of Christ is good tiding. Glorious gospel of Christ is good tiding of good. And each have what they do. Can we say amen? You know, say you people have come again. It's because we want to grow. If you want to grow, you have to go into details. Okay. So, good tidings of good will now be taught to Zion, to a daughter of Zion. Yeah. Eh? And what that good tidings of good communicates is the wisdom of salvation. What did I say it communicates? Salvation there. Ever say salvation. You know, we have taught this over and over again, but let me say it. Because of those that might be hearing for the first time. Salvation there is coming into the state of the incorruptible inheritance. Yeah. It's coming into the state of the incorruptible inheritance. Or coming into partaking of divine nature. Okay? Salvation is incorruptible. Salvation is undefiled. Salvation is unfading. That is the... That when it says salvation in the New Testament, those are the characteristics of salvation. So, what will make you publish salvation is another gospel. It's called good tiding of good. Or the mystery of the Father. Okay? That's the Father. The, now, look at those two. So, daughter of Jerusalem that you see there, they are now supposed to now um, learn salvation so that they can now reign with God. So that said unto Zion, thy God reigneth. You see that thy God reigneth are those on the throne. So the reign of God is the reign of eternal life. What did I say? So you see in this verse there are the three mysteries are there. The mystery of Christ, the mystery of the Father, the mystery of God. Everything is there. So, the last season is that the daughter of Zion that, that finished salvation curriculum will be brought to reign with God. And so, that means that's the queen. So, let's go back to Psalm 45 verse 9. I hope you are not tired. We just started. Amen. And today is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. You know, this, this is what you say, thank God is ready for. So nobody can round me up. I will round it up, amen. So king daughters were among thy what? Honorable women. So honorable women eh, are those that are already publishing peace. Then king's daughters are called to publish what? Salvation. So the work before king's daughters is to obey salvation. Obey the commandments that will save you to the uttermost. Huh? Yeah. Then, it now says, the last phase is the queen. 
King Sutas were among the honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in what? Gold of offer. I like upon thy right hand. The right hand is the what? Is the throne. So you can see three levels here. You see honorable women uh, which are publishing peace. You see king's daughters. We are called to publish what? Salvation. Then we see the queen which is already reigning. Can we say amen? amen. Are we together? Yes, so I think we are looking at the characters and songs of Solomon. Okay. So we have looked at the queen. No, no. We have looked at the daughters. King's daughters. Let's finish I have Psalm, Isaiah 62 verse 11. And I'll just talk a little bit on the other characters. I just want to give you, because we may not be able to, we can't even finish this, this songs of Solomon. We can't finish it before image and glory conference. It's not possible. We are, we are only entering as the Lord is opening the lights. Okay, I can't even teach it chapter by chapter like that. Because you, you may get tired. You need grace to enter it. Okay? So, behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. You can see. So, who are they talking to? Daughter of Zion. Your salvation cometh. So, salvation is a revelation. It's a revelation that is coming to them. Salvation is appearing to daughter of Zion. Huh? He now says, His reward is with Him and His work before Him. So there is work before reward. Uh, his reward is with Him, but His work is before Him. So they are going to reward those. They are going to reward those that work. <laughs> and the work. Eh, is to obey salvation or learn obedience by the things you suffer is to obey salvation obey the commandments that will perfect you so salvation there is also perfection becoming the shulamite interesting the shulamites the meaning of shulamite means perfect shulamite means perfect or peaceful peaceful you know, there is a peace of Christ, but there is also a peace of God. The peace of God is salvation. The peace of God is salvation. The peace of Christ is sanctification. The peace of God is salvation. So, Shulamite means perfect. So, perfection there means saved. Fully saved. Or incorruptible. So, the Shulamite church is the incorruptible church which is the bride that will sit on the throne and reign with the bridegroom so you can see this is book of revelation in songs of solomon are we all here can we say amen so I, have you gotten all that so far amen why is it that there's a kind of grace that works when there are not plenty of people amen now so now let's look at the fourth character. I'm, I'm summarizing them, then I'll go back. Is the watchmen. The watchmen. We'll have them in Songs of Solomon chapter 3 and 5. The watchmen represent New Testament prophetic ministries. New Testament prophetic and apostolic ministries that are given to no times and season. Times and season. I can point to the Lord. They, they, are, they know the times and season and what needs to be done. You know, I, there are two things. Now, amen. Ever say times and season. I want you to follow me. Well, there's something I need to bring out here. Very key. Give me First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. Sons of Issachar. Sons of Issachar. And of the children of Issachar, they that were, they were, which were men that had what? Understanding of the times. They had on the times on, on, on the times to know what. So when you have understanding of the times, it means that you know what needs to be done. You know the work. You know the, the work to be done. 
or the syllabus. Eh? You, you, so, those that have understanding of times, they have access to the syllabus. This is what should be done. This is not an online ministry. This is ministry, prophets and apostles of the New Testament that will help the church know the current emphasis of the spirit. Can we say amen? amen? And what we need to be doing now. What, For instance, what should the church be doing now? What should be the emphasis of the church now? 2022. What should the church, where are we in the journey, in our journey? In the prophetic, in the scope of eternal agenda, where is the church? And what should the church be doing now? Now, the church can do many things, but she may not do the main thing. You know, when you know the season, you know what to do. If you don't know that winter is coming, you will not prepare for it. Uh, if you wear jumper shirts, I won't let it. If you wear, if you dress casually in winter, cold will kill you. You know, currently UK is in a recession. Those that want to jack by, you have to know that where you are jack by into, there are problems. Liz Truth just resigned. Less than two months in office. So we heard that there are a lot of Nigerians that don't have accommodation. And cold is coming. Or cold has even begun. And it's going to get colder towards December. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not a prophet of doom. It's just, it's just good to know your onions before you jack back. Interesting now, they, they are giving people visa now. This is the time they are giving you. You can't trust the white man. This is when they are giving people visa. So you don't even need visa anointing. I, I, I saw one minister say, no need visa. they are giving people visa now. Amen. Hallelujah. So they know what Israel ought to do. Okay, so when you have understanding of times, you have an understanding of the what. So it's not just understanding times and season. No, you know what should be emphasized. So those are the watchmen. The watchmen. In the gospel, the watchmen also are the midnight criers. In Matthew 25. Take me to Matthew 25. You know everybody slept, but the midnight cries did not sleep. Yeah. And we, we we don't we normally don't for, we normally don't remember them. Yes, sir. All the virgins slept. All of them slept. But the midnight cry, who are the people that cried? Yes. Behold, the bride go comet. So the midnight criers, the watchmen were not sleeping. They knew the times. And they were emphasizing what? They were the ones that blew the shofar. Can we say amen? amen? The midnight criers are the watchmen. And I said in the New Testament, they are New Testament prophetic apostolic ministry. Not those carrying titles, please, I beg you. But those that have understanding of what should be done. What the church should be doing now. So you can see, while the bridegroom tarried, they all what? Slumbered and slept. At Midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So that was their message. So watchmen have a message. What is their message? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. They don't have any other message. Their message is a person. Their message is a person. They, that's what they are called to do. They are not called to any other thing. They focus on a person. Behold. To behold means see him. Know him. These are friends. Yeah. No, no. We say our friends of the Bible. Coming there. These are watchmen. No. These are still watchmen. Because in Songs of Solomon, you have watchmen. You have friends of the bridegroom. They are all ministries. Okay. So, behold, the bridegroom cometh. 
go ye out to meet him. So two things. They teach him. They teach you how to know him. Go ye out to meet him. You can see their message is about him. So that's the, so those are watchmen, okay? Now let's, let's look at the fifth character. Are you ready? Yeah. So I said, the watchmen and his uh, songs of Solomon, um, chapter 3 and 5. If I, you see, at a particular time when the Shulamite was looking for a lover, immediately she passed the watchman. She saw the lover. She discovered the lover, where, where, where he was. So that's, that's, the anointing is to discover God. This goes out the Lord. When you're around them, you can quickly pick him. Can we say amen? amen? So that's Songs of Solomon chapter 3 and 5. Then let's look at the fifth character in the book. I think there are some other minor characters, but these are the major ones. Um, King's bridegroom. Uh, no, um, bridegroom friends. Friends of the bridegroom. Let, let me quickly read where they are. Because we will not touch everything. It's eight chapters. I doubt we can go more than chapter 2 or 3. We can't even go more than chapter 2. Hey, it is well. Amen. Hallelujah. Songs of Solomon chapter 6, verse 13. Yes, look at that. Return, return, O Shulamite. Return, return, that we may look upon thee. What will you see? What will you see in the Shulamite? as it were the company of two armies. Okay, so these are friends of the bridegroom. What they do is that they prepare the way for the bridegroom. Okay? Um, by teaching the bride to know his ways and standards. They are like the eunuchs in, or chamberlains in the Feast of Esther. Okay, so both the friend of the bridegroom and the watchman, they are similar. They are all New Testament ministries. All New Testament ministries with different graces. All functioning to reveal the bridegroom. Can we say amen? amen. Um, the friend of the bridegroom. A New Testament example is John. John the Baptist. Look at John 3 verse 27 to 30. Okay. John 3 27 to 30. Like I told you there were eunuchs. They are eunuchs. Okay, they are eunuchs. Amen. Amen. Thank you. John answered and said, a man, cannot, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him. Hallelujah. Amen. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him, given him from heaven. Ye you yourself bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ. So one way you will and but I am sent before him. One of the characteristics of friends of the bridegroom, they de-emphasize themselves and exalt the bridegroom. They don't mix it up. This is not a ministry that wants attention to himself. It's not title-based. It's not loud. It doesn't replace the place of the Lord. It is like, remember, it is, it is, it is a eunuch. That will not enter into the bride. You know, the thing about a eunuch is that when a eunuch is preparing virgins, he will see a lot of things. But that is why they are eunuch. They have castrated them. Everybody say castrate. castrate. You know castration? Uh -huh. you are, you are, they have made you useless. When you come around the woman, nothing can happen. Uh -huh. So that's the ministry that they will put the virgins in charge. They will put the virgins in custody of such ministries. They have to trust them with such a high level of work. That was the kind of work Paul did when he was lamenting about the Corinthian church. He says, I am jealous with you, for what? With godly jealousy. For I have espoused to you, not to myself. So these are ministries that will not point the church to themselves. They will point the church to the Lord. They are the friends of the bridegroom. Uh, it's good so that you can use this to judge. Okay, I am a little bit disturbed by recent apostolic um, ministries in the Nigerian church. I'm disturbed. I'm, I'm just saying I'm disturbed. 
Okay, uh, I think we need they need to emphasize more on the Lord and not on power, not on on the area that they, they, should, they should emphasize more on the Lord. In my in my in my mind, and this is my opinion, you may be angry, but Saul always comes before David. Join has said that. And the difference between Saul and David, Saul has a shoulder higher than everybody. Meaning, eh? It's eh, obvious with Saul. You know, with Jesus' kind of leadership model, it was not too easy to know he was a leader. Even Jesus Christ. They needed somebody inside their company to betray him. Look at, so look at how powerful that move was. But it was not easily spotted. So we still have a lot to learn. How powerful Jesus was a major move for three and a half years. When they needed to betray, they needed, they needed, it was not a public figure like. They needed somebody to betray him, to look for him and say, this is him. That's very fearful, Abby. So, uh, that's Saul. Saul. Saul is head, shoulder higher than everybody. So, amen. So, so look at this. Thank you. Go back to verse 28. I think the Lord is helping us. Aha. See, ye yourself bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ. Okay? But I am sent. So actually, this is an apostolic ministry. It's a sent ministry. But you could see that he de-emphasizes himself. He says, I am not the Christ. Okay? But I am sent before him. Meaning I am coming to around him. Now look at verse 29. Okay? He that at the bride is the bridegroom. Hmm? He that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, uh, which is what that ministry is, which standard and what? Yeret him. So that's the work. They wait on him. Amen. They are like, they are angels. They are angels. Because like you know remember when Zachariah had encounter with Gabriel he says I am Gabriel would stand in the presence of God meaning I'm waiting on God okay so that's the kind of ministry he says which standard and hear it him okay rejoice it greatly they are rejoicing greatly because of what the bridegroom's voice so what are they hearing come on what are they hearing that's what they stand and hear, and that's what they say. So you can see similarity between the watchmen and the friends of the bridegroom. This is my joy, therefore. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must what? Increase. I must what? Decrease. So this is ministry of the New Testament. This is the how they are. Uh, it says, this is my joy. The joy is that the bride, the voice of the bridegroom is moving out. Remember John? He says, I have no greater joy but to see my children what? walk in truth. So this thing is spread all through scripture. Uh, can we say amen? amen? So these are friends of the bridegroom, okay? Um, I think we have seen them. Okay. And I can tell you, they are... It's important, both the watchmen and friend of the guy, bridegroom constitute ministry that will prepare the bride. Because the bride needs ministry. They need eunuchs. If not, they will not be prepared. I believe that God is raising bridal churches already. Churches that will prepare the bride. Where the emphasis will prepare the bride. So when you are asking at times, uh, why are they not doing many things? You can understand that when your focus is to raise the bride, you must not give yourself... It's not like you don't do other things, but there is an emphasis. Well, you know, amen. amen. 
when you open when you open the environment of a new testament church the emphasis must be perfection what did i say environment when it's, it's like just imagine this door you're opening the door you know there's a smell that comes out uh, just like when you enter a kitchen you open the door a smell eats you the smell is is a is a proof that something is happening am i right Aha. when you come around kilimanjaro they must you must feel a smell so when you come around new testament church you must feel a smell the smell is what perfection maturity salvation even though when you enter it, they are getting people born again. They are teaching milk. They are teaching the basics. But the emphasis is perfection. That's how you know it. You can when you spend one week, you know that this, this is what these people are saying. At times, when you listen to some ministers, they may call themselves apostles, but they don't. There's no emphasis. Their emphasis is not perfection. That's not a New Testament apostle. That's a very low apostolic operation. You, it doesn't take so long. When, you, when you're under the ministry of an apostle or prophet of the New Testament, it is clear their goal is perfection, maturity, sonship. It's clear. And there is a way. They don't just talk it. They, their method is scripture. It's not encounter. Eh? The, a, a New Testament apostle but does not minister encounter. They don't share their encounter as how what you need to have to know the Lord. No. They will open the laws of the New Testament. Teaching priest. Is this from here? This is what they the, the, Amen. This is what they should be teaching. They should be promoting doctrine. I'm helping some people's heart. At times, what is popular eh, in most cases has at times no relevance with what God is doing. If not, 300 people will not be qualified to be part of Gideon's army. Look at how many people God screened. Okay. So we can see. So he must increase. I must decrease. Now let's look at the last, the last, the Shulamite brothers. Okay, then I'll go back to Songs of Solomon. Oh my, it's as if I've not said anything at all. Okay, have we gotten anything? Yes, sir. This is already after it. Okay, Shulamite brothers, Songs of Solomon. Let's look at this. Songs of Solomon, chapter eight, verse eight to nine. Let's quickly read that place. <coughs> Only, only God knows the wisdom that penned this thing. Oh my, 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 my. Songs of Solomon chapter 8 from verse 8. Let me read what the Shulamite brothers said. Okay. Now, these Shulamite brothers are not finished the curriculum of salvation. Okay, like the Shulamite. The Shulamite is the bride. But Shulamite brothers are that company. Okay. That they are still understanding or some uh, uh they are on the journey of salvation now look at what they said he said we have a little sister and she has no breast now this little sister refers to a church that has not entered the kingdom she's a church but she has not entered the kingdom because what what the kingdom does is to grow breasts I say this spiritually, amen. Okay. Breast represents two works of the Father. That's what they mean. El Shaddai. The Shaddai realm is most holy. So when you see breast, they are just two works of the Father. That is that that woman as, as, uh, is that's a mature woman. So when they say, I have a little sister, we have a little sister, and she has no breast. Meaning that she has not, this sister has not even, has not even learned Christ. Because she said no breast. Your breast begin to grow with Christ. Amen. I say this spiritually. You know, it's Bible. 
Uh, it says, so it says, what shall we do for our, our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? What shall we do to this our sister? If she be a wall, eh, we will build upon her. If she be a wall, meaning that she's not yet, she doesn't have a wall. Wall represents salvation. To have wall is to become incorruptible. Remember Isaiah chapter 60. Your gate shall be praised. Your wall shall be what? Salvation. Isaiah 60. Then Isaiah 26. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. Salvation. We have a strong city. Salvation we got appointed for walls. And bulwarks. So when you see wall in scripture, it represents what? Salvation. Now let's go back to Songs of Solomon chapter 8. Huh? So, if she be a wall, <laughs> we will build what? Upon her, a palace of silver. Silver represents redemption. And she, if she be a door, eh, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. Enclose her means that they will lock, up, they will lock her up. Eh? She will be a sealed garden. So it's a mature church that is a sealed garden. Or another word for it is a locked garden. If you are not a virgin, you are open. So they would use doctrine to close you up. Doctrine of Christ closes you up. Doctrine of the Father seals you. If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. Okay, I think that's... Wait, wait. I'm coming. Then now, you now see... Now, I just want to... Amen. Just to now show you the difference between the little sister. Like I said, has not entered the kingdom. She has not even entered the kingdom of Christ. The kingdom of Christ begins from the outer court. Yes. So this is a church that has not entered the tabernacle. So we have many churches like that. The church that she has not entered the tabernacle. She can have gifts of the spirit. She has anointing. She's healing the sick. But she's still a little sister. Huh? She has not even entered. She has no breasts. If you say that she is, he has immature breasts, you understand? But you say she has no. She's a, she's a girl. She's under 10. She's a, she's, a, she's a small girl. So meaning she has to grow. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 10. Let's now look at the difference. I am a wall. I my breast like what? Towers. Amen. That's why I said this book is not for people that are not spiritual. You know, it, it, your conscience will not be able to receive it clearly. You will you'll be struggling with a lot of things. Ah, yes, I, I'm just going to teach it a little. I won't go in depth. I am a wall. My breasts are like towers. Ever say towers. Those are everlasting towers. Their name of the Lord. They are, they are, they are fortress. Then, then was I in the eye. Then was I in the eyes as one that found favor. Or one that found, some say one that found peace. That's the peace of God. So when you are like this, you will, you will, the king will design you. Take me to Psalm 45. The king will desire you, you know. And the old Then you saw Thank you. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. So that so that's it. So what the what what beautifies 
the bride is that she's fully mature. She has towers. She has towers. So that's the Shulamite brothers. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we say Amen? Let's go back to Songs of Solomon, chapter 1. Can we say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. So the Songs of Songs, which is Solomon. Now, some translation will say Solomon's most excellent songs. Most excellent song. Okay, most excellent song. I like the word most excellent. So like I told you, the actual song of songs is the song of the bride. Okay? So, but there are songs that must be a procession before you sing the song. There is a song that must be sung. That song is a song of eternal bliss. What did I say that song is? That is the song between the the married couple. There's a song they will sing that no other person can sing except the couple. And the reason is because the bride has entered into the king's chamber. Now, daughters of Jerusalem are not yet in the king's chamber. But the Shulamite has entered. Meaning she is the bride. Ali, I'm not hearing your amen. So, when she becomes the bride, there will be a song she will sing. That song is the song of eternal love. Take me to Revelations 19. Let's, let me go back there again. Verse 7. What did I say that song is? Eternal love. That's the, that's the, that is the song of God. So that's why they call it Song of Songs. Okay? So there's an actual song that the bridegroom, the bridegroom wants to hear. And it's only the bride that can sing the song. That song is a life that can be lived only by the bride. It is now the bride being able to live out or be, give witness to the bridegroom perfectly. Meaning there is no disparity between what? The bridegroom and the bride. Can we say amen? amen? So let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage supper has come and the wife has made herself ready. Okay? Verse 8. And, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So, yes, all these things are still everlasting. Now, all this is for her to sing the song of the bridegroom. Which is the song of God. So we can say the song of the bridegroom. Eh? And the song of God is the song of eternal life. Eternal life is the song of songs. Eternal life is the song of songs. Is the song for reigning. It is the song that the, that the bride that is reigning will sing. The bride singing that song is, that, is the life that the bride will be living Amen. eternal life will now become the life of the bride but she can only give witness to that life on the right hand she's already been enthroned she has to be the queen so like i told you um amen you have to be enthroned to sing that song now you can be a bride but you are not yet queen like vashti in fact, they refer to Vashti, Queen Vashti. However, she has not been brought before the king. She has been prepared, but she did not receive, she did not submit to the full process of her donning. Amen. What did I say? Oh. That's Queen Vashti. So, the king was wrought with her. That's not ordinary. For a king to be wrought with a queen. That is Meaning that instead of attracting favor, she acted wrought. 
So meaning that she did not do the king's will. She didn't submit to love commandments that will make her beautiful before the king. So instead of favor, she got wrought. So Vashti represents a daughter of Jerusalem church or a daughter of Zion company that did not finish works of salvation. She didn't perfect it, so she was rejected. She was rejected. She was even doing her own program. Amen. She was running another program. When the feast of King, how many of you know where I'm talking from? Where am I talking from? Very good. Book of Esther. So when the king was running feasts, the king ran the feast in the uh, uh, was running multiple feasts. Vashti the queen. Hey, look at her. Thank you. Also Vashti the queen. They call her the queen. But you see, I now you know it took God to reveal this to me that she was not yet enthroned because she needed to. We'll see that. I, I mean, I understand that that there are seasons of or bringing you to the presence of the king. Just like you can be king, but you have not, you don't have, you have not yet been coronated. Just like our present uh, King Charles, Charles King Charles III. I heard he will be coronated next year, but he's being King Charles now. God forbid if anything happens within now and then, he has not been coronated. Okay, so. Asked of Ashtai the queen made a feast for the woman in the royal house. Look at it, oh, which belonged to King. So she was holding a counterfeit feast. And that was what was happening to the seven, some of the seven churches in the book of Revelation. They were doing their own thing. They were, thank you. Other doctrines were visiting them. There were churches that were supposed to give them, because they were virgin churches. A virgin church means that what makes you virgin is that you are not adulterated. Huh? What did I say what makes you virgin? In fact, one of the common sins in some of the churches in the book of Revelation, those seven churches, is that they were, they were, they were, they were guilty of fornication and idolatry. Fornication and idolatry or adultery and idolatry. Meaning that I, uh, adultery, adultery is where you get adulteration. Am I right? That's where you get adultery. Meaning you are mixing things up. Okay. So we had strange doctrines that began to pollute their feast. Meaning they were having another feast. Doctrine of Balaam was a feast. Hello. Can we say amen? amen? Don't be tired. Praise God. Hallelujah. The doctrine of Balaam was a feast. The doctrine of Jezebel. He says, amen. Let's quickly jump to the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's look at it. Let's, let's look at those three churches. Look at them. Uh, but I found, okay, this is Revelation chapter 2. Let's see the church first. Let's not just jump there. Um, this should be church in of is it Pergamos? Thank you. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? This thing said, "He that hath the sharp edged sword, sharp sword with two edges." That's a serious thing. I I know thy works, and thou and where thou dwellest, where Satan's seat is. Thou oldest, I've thought these things before. Thou oldest fast my name has not denied my faith. Even in the days wherein Antipas was a faithful martyr, yeah? who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Okay? But I found few things against you. Because thou hast them that owed the doctrine of Bilaam. So, in that church, there was another feast. So, it's possible that there is because all these churches were churches in the feast of God. They were all in the feast of God. There is a feast of everlasting light. It's a feast of God. But then I had some other people amongst them that were doing their own feasts. 
Because there, thou hast them that hold the doctrine of Bilaam. Who taught Bilaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel? Now look at it. To eat things sacrificed to idols, idolatry, and to commit what? Fornication, slash adultery. So when you are not single-eyed with the doctrine, eh, you, will mo you are most likely, you know, you're, you know, you are most likely doing on that feast. So, so, so thou ask also them that hold the doctrine of Nicodemus. Which I, look at it too. See, let me tell you. Everybody say doctrine. At times, I have, I have, this, and these are very, these are very sensitive areas in, in, in relationship. At times you will say, I love everybody. Yes, we love everybody. But I don't fellowship with everybody. Let me tell you the reason why. If you hold the doctrine that Jesus is eight, you, I can't fellowship with you. And at times, when you take that stance, some people feel that you are, you may, they may say you are extreme. But look at what Jesus said there, it's clear. He eh? it says, so thou hast also them that hold the doctrine of Nicolaitis, which thing I hate. So Jesus hated that doctrine. Some people were, were, were fellowshipping with it. You will be committing sin if you allow them into your heart. This is the point where brethren fight. There's such a thing like that. We disagree. No, I don't disagree with what you're doing. You are not. Amen. Can we say amen? amen. I know it's a painful one, but it's true. Okay? So some people are holding the doctrine that Jesus ate and they are your friend. Is hard, Abby. But they are your friend. They are your five and six. It means you don't know what love is. You can't stand with Jesus. Eh? You're not ready to stand with Jesus. You want to be a friend of all. If I feel that this is one of the reasons why some, some many ministers got polluted. They were going on every platform. They don't have to reject platform. I know one particular minister like that. I feel that he had the potential to go far. But he began to go on many platforms. And you know the problem with platform is that platform will corrupt you. Satan will tell you that, see these people, you understand? You want to please them. And in pleasing them, you will displease Jesus. You cannot have a message, eh? You cannot have a kingdom message and please everybody. You will not do some, you know, you, people will hate you without doing anything to them. I'm telling you, if you're not ready for that, you're not ready to please the Lord. You have not done anything, but they will not just like you. It is what you hold. Those are things that you must be ready for. Amen. So, that's a feast going on. Uh, not to stay longer. So, we had some feast. Doctrine of Bela, doctrine of Jezebel, were feast that were going on in the midst of everlasting churches. So you can now see why. Amen. Let's go back to the feast of Esther. I think God is just opening this thing up. So you can see verse 3 and 4. There was a feast. Quickly. Esther chapter 1. Amen. Now in the days. Now look at verse. Yes. In the third year of his reign. He made a feast unto all princes. And he summoned all. The power of Pisha and Media, the nobles and the princes and the provinces being before him. Verse 4. Which he showed what? What was this feast about? The riches of his what? Glorious kingdom. And what? The honor of his what? Excellent majesty. This was an everlasting eternal feast. When you see majesty, that's the throne. When you see a rich, glorious kingdom, that's everlasting. So you are seeing, you are seeing feast going on. Many days, many days. How can you feast alone? You know, you know what it means just to be doing party and you are not, you don't, you don't have plan when you end. That's that's stupid money. You know a party that is just going on. They don't even know when they will stop the party. 
uh, many days, even an hundred and four score days. A score is 20. Four score is 80. Hundred and that's 180 days. That's that's six months party. This is feast, man. This is what you call feast. So this is how that's the feast we are in now. Can we say amen? So when we call meetings, come. There is a feast. Those days at home. Huh? Now look at verse 5. And when these days were expired, 180 days. Normally you should rest now. After doing feast for six months. In fact, we are still here to come into this thing fully. The king made a, another one. And I made a feast unto all people that were present in war, Shushan the palace. This one is not Shushan. This is most holy feast. One reached everybody. Another one was between Shushan. Shushan the palace was where the throne is. But unto what? Great and small. Seven days. These are different stature of men. Uh, Great father, small, little children. In between, young men. Actually, this small begins, you know, little children, like I taught you in the epistle of John, there are two, but they, 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 even the list of the little children, they are in the most holy. So, great answer. So, this is a most holy feast. Seven days in the court of the garden. You can see it's a garden. Of the king's place. Uh, now look at verse. So you can now see what was happening. Okay, so there was a feast going on. It was a feast eh, that would now raise a queen. So when the feast is going on like that, what they want to bring forth is a bride. Now look at verse 7. Am I right? Amen. And, and they gave them to drink in vessels of gold and vessels diverse one from another. <laughs> and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the queen. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compare. For so the king had appointed to all officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. They were just also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women. In the royal house which belonged to the king. Bible is very specific. Meaning you are in the house of the king doing your own feast. You, there is a program going on. You are running your own program. You, you are running your own side. You know. This little is someone who runs a telegram. You are doing your own program. Why the king has his own program? So this is this is rebellion. Now look at verse. Eight, re, let's just read. Amen. We have moved now to Esther. Okay. Let me do Esther a little and go back to Songs of Solomon. They are actually twin books anyway. Amen. So on the seventh day, when the act of the king was merry with wine, this was when the king all now wanted to now summon. The queen to now reign with him. I like the word his heart was merry. Everybody say merry. That's that I like uh, that's the state that the king is. Then he commanded my woman, Bista, Abona, Bicta, Abata, Zeta, Kakas, the seven chamberlains that served in what? The presence of the king. Those chamberlains, like I said, are like seven spirits that walk with ministries. They are also Enoch's. The you know, seven spirits walk with ministries. They now want to bring the they want to bring the queen. Verse eleven to bring Vashti before the king with, with royal crown with, with crown royal to show the people 
And princes are beauty, for she was too fair to look. She was fair to look on. This her beauty was not was not a good beauty. It wasn't a good beauty. There, there is not, it's not all beauty that is good to look upon. That's why for a woman, your beauty is not physical adornment. It's good to adorn yourself physically. Your beauty is a meek and what? Quiet spirit. So that beauty they were talking about was a physical one. It says it was fair to look upon. But eventually, we now saw that that now disqualified her. Because Koniwa. Iwa Nikili. Iwa Nikili. Iwa Nikili. Iwa Lewa. Koniwa. How can you find Lojun? When you take her to your parents' house, she will mess up. She will fumble. Amen. That's the difference from a little sister and a mature sister. I will teach you these brothers tomorrow. Some of you don't know the two. You don't know the difference. My wife has never had a problem with my mom. In fact, my wife and my mom are best of pals. My mom will be calling her, she won't call me. Some, some, of, some people, you know a little sister is praying for her mother-in-law to die. That's a little sister. She can't handle complexities because Koniwa. Oko fine Lojuni. She doesn't have Iwa. When you marry a slave queen like this, you're in problem. Slave queen. <laughs> Amen. No, people are not saying some brothers are already thinking. If you don't want to die, don't come tomorrow. <laughs> if you want to die, come. If you don't want to die, I permit you to stay up. Because can we say amen? amen. And I want I, I want to settle some things finally. So I don't want anybody to disturb me after tomorrow. That's why I'm doing the meeting. I don't want anybody to come and daddy that don't come and daddy me again. You will you are going to hear my mind tomorrow. I want to reveal to you my law. So you can see verse time. Now look at verse verse twelve. Look at what happened. Amen. I won't take time. Okay, let's we'll round up by nine. Okay, look at verse 10. Now, aha, aha, look at that. But the Queen Vasha refused to come. Look at that. The only reason you will refuse to come, everybody say, Come. I like you know this brother line. He said, Bid me come. Uh -huh. So, what the wife is waiting for is come. Actually, a true wife is made for her husband. A true bride is fashioned for a bridegroom. It's like your will. Eh? Is my command. So when they call you and you say, Me, O Lord. Oti ni another lover. Oti Lord combo me. You understand? In English, meaning you have another husband somewhere. The person they were preparing you for calls, you say, I not do. You refuse to come. Ah. So the queen, the queen Vasha refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. So she did not cooperate with seven spirits. I like the word. Look at what they call the chamberlain. Chamber. Chamber. They are spirits of the bosom. Therefore was the king very what? Wrought. That is wasted investment. And his anger burned in him. That is what it, that's why we need to be careful uh, that God will not invest in us and will disappoint God. 
at the time God now wants to to bring us we say we are you know it means something went wrong somewhere so we now know what happened was that that a someone was made to bring forth what new sets of virgins okay we, we get the story can we say amen, amen. hallelujah Praise God. Have I rounded up? Take me to chapter 2 quickly. Let's look at chapter 2. First few verses. Oh, glory to God. After these things, when the wrath of the king, Asaros was at peace, he remembered Vashtar. And what she had done, and what, de what was decreed against her. Then the king summons that minister to him then said the king's servants that minister unto him let there be fair young virgins brought for the king a meaning when they're about to replace replace Vashti and let the king appoint officers in all provinces of his kingdom that they may gather together all the fair young virgins you can say everybody say fair young virgins let's say it again another name for that are daughters of Jerusalem so this is these are characters in the songs of Solomon. Those are the people they are looking for to bring into Shushan the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Egi, the king's chamberlain. So they put virgins eh, to be taken care by the friend of the bridegroom. Chamberlains there, they are the friend of the king. What did I say? Chamberlains are. Yes. Yeah. So they are the ones that will now prepare the virgins to become the bride you look at i like the word that they they call those chamberlains keeper of the women they keep and let things for purification be given unto them so you can see um this is what the virgins needed to go through to be prepared to be bridal hallelujah okay let's go back songs of solomon oh my 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 let's quickly rush through let me see first few verses. So, song, so songs of Solomon, quickly. The song of Solomon, which is Solomon's. Verse 2. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. So, this is the Shulamite talking. This is Shulamite. Okay? So, like I said, the kisses of his mouth are doctrines of grace. Because Psalm 45 talked about Grace has been poured upon thy lips. Grace, yeah. Grace, yeah. That's the grace. Grace of God. Grace is, yeah, our love. Grace is love. What did I say grace is? So you can see. Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Um, like I said, so those are doctrines that will prepare the bride eh? that, those word kisses are the work from hebrew meaning nashak they mean to equip to arm to equip and to harm i like the word equip so virgins must be equipped to become the bride what did i say so yes so because of the sum of thy good ointments, thy name is as an ointment poured for I thought this on Tuesday. I said an ointment is a most holy oil. It's to consecrate you for most holy service. It was the oil. It's an oil. Uh, oil uh, uh, ointment after the heart of the apothecary. And it has certain spices inside. It's a compound that they use both for purification and what adornment we saw that in the feast of esther too on tuesday okay so because of the sabbath of thy good ointment thy name is what as ointment so the ointment is the revelation of a name what did i say the ointment is this is the name of the father the name of the father is both a sanctifier and an and a beautifier Meaning in the season of the father's light, they will further purge us and what? Adorn us. What did I say they would do? This, this is the father. 
And I showed you Hebrews chapter 12. That he would, he would the father loves. He was. Let's look at that place. Amen. And he scourges every son that he received. For whom the Lord loves. This Lord here is actually the Almighty. He's the Lord Almighty. Now how do you know? Verse 5. You, know, you need understanding of scripture to know. We have Lord. We have Lord Almighty. Christ is Lord. Eh? Christ is Lord. Christ can be the Father. Christ is also God. So all those mysteries are in one person. Is that clear? So, and here I forgot the exhortation that speaks unto you as children, my son. So who can be saying my son? A father. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. So it is the Lordship of the Father that we are seeing here. Which is the Lord Almighty. So, and that is the error of the name of the Father. So, that name that is an ointment, it is the name of the Lord Almighty. Okay? And that name, it, it, it purifies and it's what? Adorns. Now, look at verse 6 quickly. Let's just rush through this, then we'll go back. A whom the Lord loveth, he chastises and scorches every son he receiveth. Okay, those are two seasons of preparation. And if you endure chastening, God delivered with you as what? Sons. For what son in whom his father does not chasten? Chasteneth not. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So what, what is Vashti? Illegitimate. Uh, meaning, what legitima legitimizes you is your process. It's your purification and adornment. And what disqualifies you is when you don't cooperate with that process. So Vashti was disqualified. Furthermore, okay, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not more be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? Rest 10 quickly. For verily, for a few days, chastening us after our own pleasure, but if our own profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Meaning that you might be what? Made beautiful. Beautiful in holiness. Holiness is beautiful. Verse 11. Yeah. Amen. I think so. Let's go back to Songs of Solomon. So, therefore, the virgins love you. The virgins love thee. Huh? Draw me away. Can we say, draw me away? Uh -huh. Now, look at verse. So, that's the Shulamite. Now, look at verse 5. No, okay. Draw me away. The next verse. No, no, no. Go back. Verse 4. Verse 4. As other uh, draw me away we will run after thee the king has brought me into his chambers now when I was teaching you about the bride and the bridegroom some months ago I said the union I said there are three seasons uh, I said the last season is the celebration and for that celebration to be done, the bride must be admitted into the chamber of the bridegroom and they will seal the union Then they will come out for the celebration. If the bridegroom finds out that the, uh, the bride is not a virgin, they end, they end it there. The contract ends. You know, the first season is the contract. Uh, when you sign the marriage, uh, marriage contract called the ketubah. Then the other uh, C is what? consummation the consummation ends in the chambers uh, people have already forgotten hey I, I i know that we say we should be listening to the messages anyway the next so consummation is what ends in the chambers so it is after consummation you move into celebration celebration is a feast that is eternal so when you look at revelation chapter 90 when the bible says um, it was an invitation to the marriage supper 
between the bride and the bridegroom. So if, if it's a celebration to a marriage supper, it means that they have already consummated it. You don't have celebration before consummation. It is after consummation that you have what? Celebration. That celebration is not a feast. It's the party between the bride and the bridegroom. And they are inviting people. Those that invite are not those that are... They are not the bride. Amen. There is bridal company. Bridal company is not the bride. Bridal train is not the bride. There are some that they will invite to the wedding. They can come to the wedding, but they are not the bride. So we will remember thy love. The upright, the upright love thee. Amen. Let me just read verse 5 and 6 and then we'll round up there. So it's the Shulamite that he's talking now. I am black but comely. So when you say I am black, black hair is not, this is Tumim. This is black stone. We have taken those things away. But you know, I told you that in the two works of, the ever, of everlasting life, or the two works of the Father, we have two stones. One is what? Urim. And the other one is Tumim. Urim is what? A white stone. Please, if you can get it, you can project it for us so that some people can see it. While Tumim, let me stand up. While Tumim is what? A dark stone. So Tumim is a church. Thank you. So those are two those are two levels of works or states in our approaching God. We will first become white, then we we'll become dark. Dark means perfection. When you say bl black is beautiful, it means that black is perfect. Amen. It is the white man that made us feel that black is inferior. He's envy. Amen. Our color is better than their own. That is why I don't know what they did to Michael Jackson. It was they oppressed him. I, I, I saw one video about how he began to change gradually till he bleached himself to a white person. There is, there is the best color you need to be proud of when you have is black color. When you have black. We have the best skin. You don't know? Go and do your research. So I'm even talking about natural in the natural. So black is beautiful. Truly, it is. Black represents perfection. Amen. Hallelujah. So we actually think that, you know, there's a way we look. In recent times, I've been doing a little bit. You know, I like historical stuff. My wife has been saying, well, I may be watching, um, you know, the making of an African colony. I've watched it like three times. I'm still watching it. I'm not going to be tired. There's something I'm seeing. I'm seeing the beauty in the black race. I there's no race that will have gone through that level of oppression and still survive. Believe me. Slave trade is, is crazy. But yet, we survive slave trade. You don't understand what it means in those times. You are going to your farm, they jack you. That's the end. And you are gone. How did we, how did we cope? Years of oppression and all that. We are still here. So the, the, black, the black race has a lot of strength. So black here represents perfection. Eh? I am black but what? Comely. Oh. Let's go. I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. So she was talking to daughters. Those daughters were just admitted into the first season of the everlasting walk. So it says, I am black, but comely, old daughters of Joseph, as the tents of Kida, as the curtains of Solomon. Amen. She was veiled. She was veiled. It is the bride that is veiled. Now 
Now, so look not upon me because I am black, because the sun has looked up me. Give me, give me, no, let me, give me an NKJV. Now, what it means is that don't despise me because of my dealing. It says, because the sun has stunned me. That sun is the sun of righteousness. Don't, don't despise my dealing. Now, there is a church that does not know your dealing, that might despise it. They don't know why you are going through what you are going through. So when they look at your path, they, they just wonder, that what, how can somebody go through this path? But that is the path that the bridal company will go through. It is a path that you will want to look down on. Even, amen. I don't know if I'm making sense. Take me to Hebrews, Hebrews 10. That's what was happening to the Hebrew church. Hebrews 10 verse 32. We'll come back here. Hebrews 10, quickly, I'm coming back here. But recall, no, let's start from verse 13. Verse 31. Verse 32. No, start from verse 25. Give me KJV. Yes, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of truth, there remain no sacrifice for sin. This willful sin is transgression. Okay? After you have received the law of the everlasting God, then you turn against it. I say no more sacrifice for sin. Now look at verse 27. Amen. For a certain fearful judgment and fair inclination which shall defy the adversaries. Verse 28. He that despised Moses' Lord died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Verse 29. Oh, how ye much sorrow punishment, suppose ye, shall be taught worthy, who are trodden under the foot, the Son of God. Eh? That's the name, that's also the name of the Father. And I counted the blood of the covenant. Where he was sanctified, eh? an unholy thing, and done despite toward the spirit of grace. For we know that he had said, Vengeance belongs to me, I will recompense, say the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay? Uh, but call to remembrance the former days in which, after you were illuminated, ye enjoyed what? A great fight of affliction. That's the sun turning you. Yeah. This is what you go through. You see, amen. The easiest set of people to despise are the bride. You know, in your mind, when you say somebody is bride, you think it is the, is the most attractive. I mean. <laughs> that is man. The bride is not the most celebrated. Yeah. When, you take, when you take the old church, eh, the bride is not the most celebrated. It is even a mixed brethren in the same body that they will look at the bride and say, what, what, what is this? Because they don't understand how that can be in the process of making. So that was what was... Those things were part of things that the Hebrew church were already undergoing. And they wanted to go back. Because when the son of righteousness is arising with healing in his wings, that healing is that he's perfecting you. He wants to make you whole. Can, you, can we say amen? amen. So, let, let me finish. So, I'm dark and lovely. Do not look down upon me, son of Solomon. Take me back. For the son has stunned me. Take, no, take me to, give me, I prefer NKJV. NKJV, not NIV. Do not look upon me because I'm dark, because the sun has tanned me. I like the word tanned. <laughs> Amen. You know, what do you do? To, what is tanning? Change your skin color. And, but you know, there's something called leather. Thank you. When you want to tan leather, what, you know, when they expose it to sun, what happens with the leather? Eh? It's, 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 it's the process of drying the leather. Tanning is to make the leather solid. Eh? So, amen. So, to solidify the bride, they must expose her to sun. 
Son is the light of the Father. What did I say son is? The light of the Father. So do not, do not look at me because I'm that. Because the son. My mother's sons were ugly with me. <laughs> Even there, I saw this God reminded me. This is, this is house of Joseph. Huh? They made me keep up five years, but my own five years have not kept. So it was, this is a conflict that the bride will go through. You know, the bride company will go through conflicts, even our missed brethren. When I mean brethren, the larger brethren. There is a conflict of, and it's a conflict that must teach you how to love more. When you are hated, you show back love. When you are misunderstood, you still show love. There is a high, so what will make the bride is a high testimony of love. And miss contradictions that will be consistent. Contradictions. You know what a contradiction is? Misunderstanding. Eh? Maligning. Amen. Are we ready for this? Are we sure? He can't be everybody's friend. But you must love everybody. Now look at verse 7. Let, can I read? Amen. Let me just see. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Take me to verse 12. Because of time. While the king is at his table, my spikenard scented forth the smell thereof. Spikenard. Now, when you read Songs of Solomon, you see certain spices come up. You see spikenard, you see mar, you see enna, enna, enna blossoms, aloes. All these things are spices. They are spices that make the ointment. Can we say amen? So, the king seated at my table, at his table, my spikenard sent forth the smell. Now this looks like they were dining together. Okay? Meaning so, that king's table is the table also of what? Of the bride. Of the queen. Spikenard. Scented for the smell. Spikenard is a spice of soothing and calming. If you can read spikenard. Spikenard is a spice that causes soothing and calming. It's actually a spice that reduces blood pressure. Or aggression. So, when you have spikenard, eh, it is a type of rest. It's, 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 it helps you to be at peace. So, that's a character of the bride. Can we say amen? And that's one of the things that attracts the what? The bridegroom. It's a nature. It's a nature of peace. It's not a nature that strives. It's a calming and soothing nature. It's part of the spices in the ointment. You see, so that ointment has many things inside. Things that it works in us. Can we say amen? amen. So my spike that scented forth, I like the my spike night. That's one of the things the bride possesses. Sends forth smell thereof. Look at verse 13. The bundle of myrrh is what? My well. My, my beloved to me. A bundle of ma. It shall lie lines between my breast. Verse 14. Of course we know that ma is also. Is a spice. That is a bitter spice. But it's a purifying spice. Can we say amen? So my beloved unto me. Is like a cluster of campfire. In the vines of NGD. Now look at verse 15. Let me just read to verse 17. Behold, thou, behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast those eyes. Amen. Now this was said, verse 15 was said by the king or by the bridegroom. Behold, thou art fair. 
my love, behold, thou art fair. Thou hast those eyes. So what attracts the king to the bride is what? Dove's eyes. The eyes of a dove represents singular devotion. Undistracted devotion. So what they call fair is not, it's not talking about interpreting it in understanding of the New Testament. It's not talking about physical beauty. It's talking about state of heart. Eh? That is singular in terms of pursuit. Dove's eyes. Now the dove is the is a bird that is synonymous with the Holy Spirit. Meaning it's a symbol of purity. It's a symbol of consecration or separation. Eh? Part of the thing that the dove has is that the dove does not have. The dove does not have a bow duct. So the dove does not have bitterness. Then the dove cannot see two things at the same time. The dove cannot do many things. Naturally, the dove can only do one thing at the same time. Focus on one thing at the same time. That's the attitude that the bride has. The bride has nothing that is interest her but her Lord. And that is what the bridegroom calls, you are fair. You are fair. Thou hast dove eyes. You have eyes only for me. The bridegroom is jealous. So you can't do bridegroom with many things. You can't do bride rather with many things. If you have a nature that cannot stay on the Lord, it is, they have to still purge you of things. They have to take away things from you. Those are things that cannot qualify you to be a bride. You know, some people find it difficult to, to just wait on the Lord. And to wait upon him. And to allow him to determine the outcome of your life. The bride is like a slave of the groom. If you see the narration of love, you'll find out that the bride has nothing but love for the bridegroom. Total obsessive love. Verse 16. Behold, thou art fair, my beloved. Yea, now this is not the Shulamite. Pleasant. Also a bed is green. Green bed is, is a bed... That is, is a bed in the chambers. In those days, what they do is that they put all kinds of flowers on it. Green flowers. Okay? And they design it, just spicing it. You know, to, it represents high love. So it says, our bread is green. Verse 17. Let's round up with the last two verses. The beams of our house are cedar and our rafters are fair. When I looked at this, these are Woods that they used to build enduring houses. So meaning the love communication or conversation between the bride and the bridegroom is a building. What did I say it is? Aha. Amen. First John chapter 4 from verse 7. Let me just introduce this thought. We'll continue next week. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loved God, loved is born of God and knoweth God. Take me to the verse where he says that. He that is made, amen. We talked about the building. Verse, is it verse 10? You should know that verse. No, no, no. I'll just look for it. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you. Look at verse eleven. Let's read from verse eleven. Verse eleven. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love what? One another. Verse twelve. No man hath seen what? God at any time. But if we love one another, God dwelleth in us. 
So our love is a building. If we love one another, what happens? God dwelleth in us. Look at it. So meaning our love is a building. And his love is perfected in us. So the love of the bride and bridegroom eh, are it's what they use for that love are enduring substances. You see, fur, um, um, cedars and fur are ra raptors are actually roof. Cedars are woods that are strong. Okay? So, those are enduring substances that build the house of God. So, the love of the bride and the bridegroom is a house. It is a house. The bride and the bride. No wonder God can dwell there. I'm rounding up. Amen. Follow me. Follow me. The book of Revelation. There are three in the city. Eh? We have the throne of God. The throne of the Lamb. But they are all in the bride. So the only way God can have rest. Is because the bride and bridegroom has built a house for God. The love of the bride and bridegroom has become a beauty. Hallelujah. That God can now dwell in. So that's why it is the lamp is bright and they are God. Now God can now find a place of rest. In the midst of the love between what? The bride and the bridegroom. So that conversation is a building that God can what? Rest in. Can we say amen? So the bride and the bridegroom are going to give God rest. They will, the two will be one. That's the ministry of marriage. The ministry of marriage is that you are not normal, they are no longer two but one. So the bride and the bridegroom become one. In terms of quality of life. The bridegroom and the bride will become one. The bride will come into the estate of the bridegroom. And that fellowship will now create a, 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 a dwelling or a place where God can what? Can rest. The house of God, when you say the actual house of God, is actually a house there that his son and his bride as what raised unto their God. Can we say amen? So it is the bride and the bridegroom that we give God rest. Currently now, listen, listen to this. Amen. I want to say this. You know the bridegroom is with God. But God has not still rested. That's what Jesus said. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. And I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am there we shall be also so as it is now God has not rested yet because the bridegroom has not brought you to where he is until he brings you to where he is God cannot find a resting place Amen. So you can see the project of raising a bride is the most important project of God. It's the most important project of God. And any church that will please God must be on that thing, on that, must be in, interested in this project. You can't say you love God and you are doing another project. This is my prayer that the body of Christ, all everybody will respond to this project. Yeah. You know, you can do every other thing, but you don't like this one. Uh, it's good to heal the sick. It's good to get people born again. Uh, it's good to build auditoriums. It's good to do wonderful things for God. However, if we don't come here, we have not touched his heart, his heart cry. This is the body of God. This is the reason why God created even the heavens and the earth. I'm telling you, God wants 
a place of rest. And that will play out. When he has sent a son, his son has fulfilled his part. It remains the bride to respond to what the son well, has done and is doing. So by the end of the age, God will have a bride. Believe me, that is, does not require your faith. It, it, makes no, it does not change. If you don't believe it, in it, it does not change. I don't believe in this Bible prayer. I'm going to heaven. It's okay. It is going to happen. There will be a bride. Because the age will not end. What will end the age? Eh? Jesus is not coming any time now. Like we have been taught. What will bring him to restore his kingdom physically on the earth is when there is what? A bride that has made herself ready. So the clock is the bride. That's the clock. If the bride is not ready, there's not, nothing they are coming to do. If they round up agenda today, it means there's a bride that is ready. And this, uh, you know why I believe that there's still, there's still so much work to be done in rounding up? The message of the bride, preparation of the bride is just going out. Maybe in the church in Nigeria, only very few places you hear it. I'm saying this not because of, you don't, can you open TV and you hear in bridal church? You open internet, you hear bridal church. You see uh, many things, but not, not messages that prepare the bride. But you know, in this season, the voice will go out more. In the time of the end, this gospel of the kingdom shall be what? It should be taught in all nations as a witness. Then the end will come. That end is actually the bride. Being made ready for the bridegroom. Can we stand to our feet and give him thanks? Lift up your hands and appreciate the Lord. That God has made you worthy to hear these things. The Lord will perfect this thing in our day. Lift up your hands and thank him. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We we'll thank you for the opportunity you have granted us. To hear such hallowed words. Lord, we ask for mercy. Help us. Can you pray for yourself that these words will not fall on deaf ears, but they will be fertile in your hearts? That these words will be fertile in your hearts. That the Lord will have, this word will bear fruit inside you. You will bear full fruit unto the Father. Kabaraniya Savaragoma. Jamaniga Kramano Savaragania Tabakako Jabaraga Bronia Safarogodovediata. Can you pray that the Lord will make your heart cleave to truth? That Lord you will make my heart cleave to truth. That my heart will cleave to truth. That my heart will cleave to truth. Pray. Kabaradea. La Borogobaniasa. La la we cooperate in this season with the words that are coming forth. My heart will cleave to truth. My heart will cleave to truth. Rabadia krabaka shovele de beliata. O rabaka golebele gelebele susubadia frabaniata. A rabaka golebele gelebelea frabodiza varagadabadasha. A rabada gadabradi susubede gelebele beliata. O rabada gadabadabada shushubede gelebelea frabodia. Oh God, perfect your work in us. Perfect your work in us. Perfect your work in me. Lord, grant me capacity to respond to you. Grant me a heart that is willing. In Jesus' name. Finally, the scripture says in Psalm 110, it says, In the day of his power, his people shall be willing. That willingness means that you, re you will be willing to respond to the Lord. Amen. Now, I can tell you, based on prophetic timings, this is not the season to be doing any other thing. I am telling you, we are in a very, very crucial time. You know, at times I say, well, I say, you don't have time. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't just neglect this kind of word. It's going to stand against you. Because this is what God will do in the end days. Can you pray for yourself? That the Lord will help you to be willing, you know? It takes uh, God must help you know. Ever said you know the heart is very deceitful. Yes, sir. For, to make the heart willing, hearts any lati were empowered. Cherry hearts were buru. Meaning you are you can you just love many other things, but you. 
Some of us already have our life, you know, already planned out. Eh? So this message is like disturbing you. I was talking to someone yesterday. He was talking about a particular brother that, you know, is running away from this message. And I told the person, I said, I know him. He feels this message is disturbing him. But you see, a time will come where he will now discover that God loved him. He's like, this message is disturbing, disturbing because he has his life planned out. And then the message is just coming to disturb him, disturb him, disturb him. It's not disturbing you, it's rearranging you. Because you already have a wrong definition of life eh, arranged before you. So, this is a season where God must help your heart to be willing. To be willing is that your heart is cleaving to truth. Your heart must cleave to truth. You have to pray. You have to pray until your heart agrees. You know, as I said, a heart can be stubborn. You take, you take one percent, you leave nine. It's not a message where you take some and leave the rest. You have to embrace it. You have to, you have to take the whole lump, you know. Which piece? You have to eat it all. If not, it's not going to do anything inside you. The salvation is, your, is, is in your heart, embracing it fully. So I want you to pray for yourself. Ask the Lord to help your heart to be willing. Because we are already in the day of His power. And there will be a people that will rise forth in the earth, willing to do His will. Lift up your voice and pray. Finally. Kabaradamash. Ariagomaniya Lord, we receive grace to be willing. We we'll receive your help, Pastor. Hariagabaniya 